In this lesson, we're going to learn how to label frames and talk about why we might choose to do this. You'll begin by opening the file using frame labels underscore start. Once the file is open, generate a Swift by holding down the control key and hitting your enter key. The file consists of a series of radio buttons, and if you click a radio button, for example, let's try the first radio button, the playback head moves to a frame in the flash file. And clicking the back button should return us back to frame one, but that won't happen until we create our frame labels, so that button isn't functioning just yet. Let's close the Swift and take a look at the FLA file. You should be looking at the timeline. Every five frames in the timeline, we change the artwork on the stage. For example, frame five is showing us how to save a Flash CS5 document, and frame 10 is showing us how to save a Flash CS4 document. 15 saves an XFL, 20, a SWIFT, 25 an HTML, 30 a GIF, 35 a JPEG, and 40 a PNG. So the code that activates the radio button is found on layer 1, frame 1, in the Actions panel, which is located under the Window menu, Actions. If you look at line 25, this is the code that moves the playback head to frame 5. However, if we were to add more frames here in the course of maintaining this file, then this code would no longer work because by inserting frames between 1 and 5, the frame that holds the instructions for saving a Flash CS5 document will have been moved forward in the timeline. Therefore, the code that says to go to frame 5 will go to a frame that doesn't contain the artwork that we want to go to. Frame 5's artwork may now have been pushed further up the timeline and it may appear now on frame 12 or 13. So there's a more effective way to write this code. Let's go back to the action script code. Rather than go to and stop at a particular frame number, because that's subject to change, we can use the other code that you see on line 19, which says go to and stop at a frame that has been labeled start. If you look at the other functions, they all use frame labels, FLA4, XFL, and so forth. The label is now associated with the artwork on that frame. So no matter where that artwork or frame really should land, whether that artwork is on frame 5, 10, or 15, doesn't matter because it will always be on a frame that has a label that can be referenced with code. In this lesson, we're going to apply labels to the frames that are now at 5, 10, 15, and so forth. No matter what happens to those frame numbers, their label will always remain consistent, which means we'll never have to edit this code. Let's close the Actions panel and start labeling our frames. We'll start by making a layer devoted to labeling these frames. This keeps our timeline less cluttered. Select the Titles layer and insert a new layer. It's traditional to name this layer Labels, but you can name it anything you want, like Action Script, like artwork that's on changes of action. We must place frame labels on keyframes. However, like the Actions layer, these will always be blank keyframes. Remember, this layer called Labels is devoted to labeling frames and not really holding any artwork. Let's place keyframes on every frame in which we want to label. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. I created those keyframes by selecting the frame's placeholder and using the function key F6. Now it's time to apply the labels. We're going to call frame 1 the start frame. So when you select a frame, the property inspector gives you the opportunity to label or name that frame. Let's type start in the name field. Now we'll label the remaining frames. Frame 5 will take the label FLA5. Be sure to hit the Enter key after you type in the name field. Frame 10 will be labeled FLA4. Frame 15 will be labeled XFL. Frame 20 will be labeled SWF. And frame 25 will be labeled HTML. Frame 30 will have the frame label GIF. Frame 35 will have the frame label JPG. And frame 40 will have the frame label PNG. A new icon has appeared on the timeline. The small red flag indicates that a frame has been labeled. If there are enough frames to the right of the frame that's labeled, Flash will do its best to display the name or label associated with that frame. For example, we can see all of HTML, Swift, and FLA4, but the word start doesn't have enough room to appear. 
That's why Flash places the red flag icon, simply to let you know that that frame does have a label. You'll notice our last frame, frame 40, also does not have enough frames to the right to display the label name, but the red flag remains. Now let's take a look at our code. From the window menu, choose Actions, and put the playback head at frame 1, and select frame 1 of your Actions layer. All of the go to and stop actions in this code go to frame labels that match the labels we just provided on the stage, with the exception of the show FLA function, which is still referring to a frame by its number. Let's change that to referring to the frame label, and the frame label here is FLA5. It's important that you place that frame label in quotes. Let's save and test the SWIF, and we'll see if our radio buttons still work. Go ahead and click the different buttons. HTML takes you to HTML. The back button should now work and take you back to the frame labeled start. There's GIF, SWIF, and so forth. Let's close the SWIF and return to Flash. Now let's look at the benefit of changing our code to go to and stop at frame labels instead of frame numbers. Let's select the main layer and place your cursor in between the two keyframes and select a frame. Let's assume that we've made some changes here that require us to add a few more frames. The function key F5 on your keyboard will insert frames. So I've hit the F5 key about three times. Because this has shifted our frames over, including the keyframes, we should add the additional frames to our other layers as well. So here again, I can click anywhere, for example, inside highlights, and hit my F5 key another three times. I'll do the same thing for my buttons my titles, and my background. Let's also add three frames to the labels layer and the actions layer. Let's reopen our actions panel and remember that the function show FLA was changed to use the frame label. Let's have it go back to the original code, which simply said go to and play frame five. The problem with this approach is that the frame that shows how to save an FLA five is no longer frame five. It's now frame 8. So had we not used frame labels, we would have effectively broken that button. If we want to go to see how to create a Flash CS5 document, it takes us to frame 5. But remember, by adding additional frames, the frame we want to go to is really frame 8 now. So the way to fix this would be to go and return to your code and change any of the numbers that are now broken by going to frames. However, if we had stuck with frame labels, we'd have no problems here. Let's save and test this now that we've changed the go to and stop from frame 5 to our frame label FLA5. We'll click the flash file and it takes us where we need to go. So you've seen in this lesson how to create frame labels and also the advantages for using frame labels in conjunction with ActionScript code.